We continue now with our attention on security. We've been joined on the News of 10 by a security analyst, Mr. Dixon Osage. Thank you for joining us on the News of 10. Thank you, Amarachi. Great. And, and, and this is a recurring topic, you know, in Nigeria ever since, you know, that bombing in 2010, I believe. Uh, why does it seem insurmountable, I mean, this problem of insecurity? Why is it insurmountable for our security forces? Uh, well, for me, I think uh, uh, the security situation is on getting a, a, this deteriorating and uh, most of these guys, they are taking the vulnerability of our uh, security agents and capitalizing on that vulnerability. But first of all, when you go into a risk analysis of what is happening in this great nation, Nigeria, uh, you observe that uh, one of the causes of this, uh, the success of these criminal elements is the porosity of our national borders. Uh, the president some few days back uh, gave uh, the service chiefs an order to uh, deal with this guy decisively, and you could see the Air Force are delivering some beautiful weapons in the enemy camps. Uh, what the president needs to also do is to ensure that he also give a marching order uh, to the immigration service uh, to carry out a uh, vulnerability analysis of our national borders to ascertain the porosity of our borders because most of these guys, uh, they operate in their government space, you know. Uh, their government space is where they take their shelter each time they come to the, to the town mm. and strike. So uh, they need to carry out a vulnerability analysis of our national borders and let us understand the porosity and the level in which uh, the mitigation factors will be projected. Yeah, it seems like the presence is doing the thinking for the security forces. I mean, they're the ones who are supposed to have the expertise, aren't they? I mean, the, the security forces you're mentioning and then the immigration service, they're supposed to have the expertise. Yeah, uh, you know, in security management, is what we call territorial behavior. Territorial behavior is taking accountability of your territory. Uh, the security agency are supposed to take uh, uh, the territorial behavior of this great nation into account without uh, uh, letting the president come into the aid or giving them orders. Uh, some few days back, uh, the chief of army staff uh, went to engage the terrorists, and uh, that I classified as army headquarter attack, you know. Uh, but for me, I don't think we have gotten to that state whereby we we'll have the number one security, uh, the number one soldier in this great nation, the chief of army staff, uh, going to uh, fight the enemy. Uh, what has gone wrong all this while is that uh, the military are overstretched. The uh, criminal element, the terrorist, for example, has two strategies, political strategies and tactical strategies. Their political strategy is to persuade, is to coerce, and to subvert. Now, their tactical strategy is to exhaust the military, and you mean to intimidate, and also to uh, 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 protract the military. So the military has been fighting this war for the past 10 years, and uh, these elements are taking the Nigerian Army, Nigerian Air Force, Nigerian Navy, mm -hmm. are dragging with them for the past 10 years. Yes, we must understand that uh, fighting terrorism is a two-way coin. Uh, that is the enemy-centric and population-centric. Uh, the military has done so well. We need to see the police coming on board to also support the military mm. in curtailing this uh, situation and also uh, the uh, population, uh, the uh, civilian approach. Uh, more of the national orientation agency, they need to also support the army uh, because the truth is that uh, if the military wants to kill, they will kill till eternity. They are not fighting a war uh, against, uh, 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 it's an ideological-driven war. So mm. ideological-driven war is a war that could take till eternity. Yeah, but it's also a physical war because you're, you're, you're trying to protect a group of people and and for most of the northern uh, uh, parts of Nigeria, where there have been banditry and kidnappings, there's a lot of fear in these communities. And that's what the terrorists want, to create an atmosphere of fear. So how do you reduce that, you know, when you have vulnerable people in the communities? You already said that the military is already overstretched. Yeah. Uh, the truth is that uh, the reason why the military are overstretched was because uh, their operational strategy is somehow defaulting. Uh, because sometimes when you place a soldier in the front line for two, three, four years, uh, his mental well-being will, be, will depreciate. Uh, you can't leave a soldier more than nine months in, in the front line. Part of the reason why the military are failing in this operation, most especially the Nigerian army, is their uh, deployment strategies. And I think the chief of army staff is addressing that strategy. Because uh, as a soldier, uh, your mindset is prepared to fight and unite with your family. In a battlefield, in any given field, uh, we have the, the, uh, the enemy mindset and the uh, state mindset. The enemy is fighting to die, while the military mindset is fighting to reunite with his family and also enjoy their marital benefit. Mm -hmm. So uh, if the military want to get this war very well, they need to go back to the drawing board, uh, ensure that they uh, carry out an effective uh, diplomatic strategies. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Nigerian government, the president, should also look at uh, giving the Nigerian army an uh, aviation base, you know, uh, so that they also have an attack uh, helicopter. Because sometimes when this enemy fight, uh, fi firepower comes, they tend to, uh, uh, you know, you know, pressure the military until the military calls for the army calls for air force uh, uh, backup. So if the Nigerian army should be given, if the Nigerian army has uh, a form of aviation base where they have an attack helicopter, they'll be able to attack this insurgent with a high fire power, and defeat will be uh, uh, imminent. Well, this is an ideology that has been going on for years, but you have some states that are accusing vigilante groups of perpetrating, uh, provoking some of these attacks. But then 
you would want to see the police or the military work with vigilante groups because the military, as you said, can't be everywhere. Security is systematic. Uh, the governor of um, uh, Kassina State made a, made a big error last year. He went and negotiated with the enemy. Negotiating with the enemy is a sign of weakness. You, and you if, don't negotiate with terrorists, but, if but you, that depends, if you, right? If you, if you must negotiate with the enemy, you must negotiate from the side of strength, not on the side of weakness. But he went and negotiated with these guys on the side of weakness. And how did he ascertain the hierarchy of command of those guys? Who told him that these guys are capable of calling, uh, call, call, uh, seizing fire? Because uh, sometimes we tend to look at security as uh, uh, a discretionary war. What is happening in Nigeria is a war situation. When human lives exceed 999 being decimated by this criminal element is an internal war situation and such kind of war should be classified as a necessary war. So the Casino State Governor, I thank God, I appreciate him. He accepted and acknowledged his mistakes but sometimes we should not negotiate with this enemy. We should push them to a track whereby we will negotiate from the side of strength. In doing so, uh, Nigeria will be a better place uh, because looking at the uh, spirit of insecurity now, these guys, they are now being celebrated, you know. Uh, when you go into a geological driven fight, you, this, like uh, what uh, Nasser Erufai did, uh, the Governor of Casino State, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, dissolving al uh, school because the uh, terrorists have a kind of network they employ their fighters. They will classify their fighters as a, a dark network. Well, they use, they use all means necessary and all means available. Thanks again, Doc, Mr. Dixon or Sergei, for being here on Thank the news Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Thank you.